Here are two great pictures of what the fly looks like in the water. The left side, from the fisherman's point of view, is floating halfway in the surface film. And on, from the fish's point of view, looking straight up, he sees this nice body profile, thorax down to a slim body, and a bright shiny wing. Our hook is a dry fly, Teamco TMC100. It's in a size 28. The thread is a 16 aught light brown to match the otter. We're gonna start with our jam knot right behind the eye. We're gonna go two eyelets behind the eye and back to the center of our thread base. Take an extra wrap and that's where we're gonna tie in our parachute post. Take five strands of your turkey tea base feather, bring them underneath the thread, put them on top, adjust where you want it. Let's make another wrap. That looks good. Let's lock that in in the front with a couple wraps and lock that in in the back. Now let's wind up our post. And finish going around the hook behind the post twice. Take a little uh, super glue and we're going to put that on our post. This is low viscosity Zappa Gap. Let's talk about otter. Otter dubbing floats better than any synthetic or water-based animal dubbing I have tested. The fine diameter of 12 microns is smaller than super fine or fine and dry synthetic dubbings. Add to the fact that there are over 1 million hairs per square inch, the pelt is impenetrable by water and keeps the otter dry. A densely wound dubbing will provide the same protection from water saturating the fur, resulting in a floating fly. The guard hairs are also amazing. The upper end of the guard hair is over 130 microns in diameter, the largest of our water-based dubbing animals. These hairs protect the down layer from abrasions. This also provides a stiff tail for us to aid in the floatability of the fly resting on the surface tension of the water. An interesting side note, the otter guard hair slims down to the same diameter as the down hairs to allow an integrated layer to keep the water out. Just an amazing design. For our tail and our dubbing, we're gonna use otter. So get a otter patch, grab a hold of a clump right near the edge, clip it off. You can see the guard hairs there. Just grab a hold of uh, them tightly and separate the two. See, we've got a big group of uh, guard hairs there for our tail. And then just clean up the uh, down uh, fibers and mix those for our dubbing. I was able to get a good many guard hairs from our fur pelt. And I want to use five of these for our tail. I want these to be about three quarters the length of the hook shank. OK, 
Okay, keeping your finger firmly on those, let's wind back to the bend of the hook. And then going back towards the post and really locking those in. If you have too many, you can pull easily pull those out. So here's the dumping I got from that clump and I removed the guard hairs and did a quick hand mix. Now we're just gonna take a few fibers and make a little rope to go up to the post. I mean, when you dub this, I mean, take a very few fibers, like that much for, you know, every little section here. So just that much there. I'm going to go back to the bend of my hook here. And then wrap forward. up to the post. I selected a hackle feather. This one's about one and a quarter inches long and the uh, uh, fibers on it are about three millimeters. Not ideal, I'd really like to have two to two and a half, but uh, those are really difficult to find. So I'm gonna take this with the shiny side up, right in front, front of the post make some good tight wraps we're going to dub the red uh, some more of our thread and then make a thorax Go under our feather. Okay. and then around our post at the very base. With the shiny side up, we're gonna wind our hackle up and back down, so there. Hmm. Take our thread over, the tag in there, under the parachute, over the eye, over, pull things back.
with tension still on do a half hitch and we'll do a double half hitch and we'll put a dab of cement on there 